presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hour of Enlightenment. I love you guys, and I'm so pleased, of course, to have my co-host, Michelle Gray, at thehealingh-art.com with us. And her little, her little sidekick, who I also love dearly, of course, as you know, my son, <laughs> Eric Medhus. And we, hello, both of you guys, and I love you. Hi, Eric says, love you, Mama. And we are going to talk about healing the inner child. I got a lot, I had a lot of work on my inner child through Kim Boyd. It was freaking amazing. It was very helpful. Uh-huh. But, you know, the, the uh-huh. mic is not for me to hold. The mic is for Eric and Michelle to hold. So I will uh-huh. let you take it away. Okay, sounds good. Hi, everybody. Eric says hi to everybody. And this is kind of special because I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do something a little bit different. And this is Eric's idea. So on Sunday morning, I was um, just kind of scrolling on my social media, as we all do. And actually, this came up in social media. It was a, a woman that was talking about her healing journey that I was watching. And she told this little story about how she would come home after school And she would put on Oprah Winfrey. And this one particular night after school, there was a Dr. John Bradshaw that came on. And he had this, I guess he was a guest once in a while for Oprah. And he had this healing, and it was called Heal Your Inner Child in Seven Minutes. And so I actually listened to it. Yes. So I I listened to it, and I, I I was astonished because things had come up for me that I didn't even know needed to come up it was just it was it was beautiful so eric recommended that we do this together as a group tonight and why he said tonight is a great night to do it is also because we are just coming upon a full moon tomorrow oh and when we have these these moons and the energy fluctuations they really help us when we're stepping into this new energy, because this particular moon, well, it's spring, right? So it's, um, Eric says, yeah. spring cleaning, cleaning the house. So he's like, let's get cleaning out our inner house and help our inner child. Because a lot of, and at least I'm sure you come across this too. I know I do with Eric, with a lot of the healing work we do as well, is that, mm-hmm. you know, the wounds of the inner child can be, um, you know, it can be a, a long journey to yeah. to work through, and when we do work through it, it is so beautiful, and and so yeah. much love for ourselves. And this is really connecting with that child part of yourself. So we're going to take a few minutes to do this, cool. and um, we're going to do this little meditation. And um, Eric wants to tell everybody that he's with each one of you. He's, he's got himself multiplied right out, and he says to you, Mama, he says, I got your hand, Mom, and I'm right oh, with you. Thank and you. And so we're going we're gonna to do this meditation, and um, and then, of course, we'll take callers with Eric afterwards. Mm. So if everybody can get nice and comfortable and, you know, take a second to just get yourself nice and comfortable and Take a nice deep breath and relax. Close your eyes. And go ahead and take one more nice deep breath and take this one right from the bottom of your feet, right way down low. A nice deep breath. Pull it all the way up through your body, up to the top of your head, and blow it out. First of all, I want you to imagine yourself as the child. And as you put that image in your mind and see yourself as a child, what age are you? I want you to, to, whatever you go to, first of all, whatever age that is, I want you to look right at your child self. See if you can determine what the age is and take a really good look at yourself. Look at your hair. Go ahead and, and touch the face. 
look at your body, look at your clothes, you know, look at your eyes, take a really good look at yourself. Can you see what you're wearing? Can you see the color of your hair? How the sun shines on your hair? Can you look at that child self version of you and can you also see where you were living at the time? Whether that was in a a family home or maybe you lived with grandparents, maybe you lived in foster care, wherever that home was at that time. See if you can identify that. And take a moment with your child self and walk around that place where you were living. Look at where you slept. Go ahead and check the bed out. Take a really good look around. If it's a house, you know, walk through it. Look on the walls. Maybe you can smell it. Maybe you can hear sound. Now, while you're there, I want you to look for your mother. Now, if you don't have a mother, if you if you weren't raised with your mother, who that mother figure was at that time. What I want you to do is I want you to observe your child self and watch your mother. What's your mother doing? Are you interacting with your mother? Are you trying to get your mother's attention? Is your mother busy? Is she cooking? Is she even home? Is she somewhere else? Do you know where she is? See if you can look at your child self and see how it is that you feel right now. Now I want you to take a second and I want you to do the same thing with your father or the father figure at that time in your life. I want you to walk up with your child self and really examine your father. What's your father doing? And maybe your father's not in the home right now. Maybe your father's somewhere else or your father figure. So where are they? Can you see what they're doing? Can you see maybe what's on their mind? Do you have a slightly different perspective as an adult as you're looking back right now? See if you can get a feel for what's going on at that. Now, I also want you to look for any pets you may have had, siblings. What are the siblings doing? What are you doing? What have you been up to in this moment? Now, most importantly, what I want you to do right now is I want you to now lean down and look at your child self as the adult you are today. And I want you to look right down at your child self and say, I'm here to take care of you. I promise you, I've come here to take care of you, to love you, protect you, and to always keep you safe. I absolutely promise that from the bottom of my heart. Now, I want you to reach behind your back, and you're going to have a little bag in your hand. You're going to hand that bag over to your child self, and you're going to tell her, now you go ahead and you go pack up this little bag and pack up anything that you need from your house. You go ahead and put whatever stuffed animals or blankets or is there anything in there that makes you feel safe? And I want you to do that because I'm going to take you with me today. Now, if your child self turns and says, but I'm scared, I don't want to go, I I don't know anything different, you say, well, that's okay. I'm not going to force you, but I want to let you know that we can always come back and visit. But it's time for you to go now. It's time for you to see life on your own. It's time for you to do things in your own way, and I'm going to help you do that. And so what I want you to do now is I want you to pick up your child self and hug her real tight and hold on and take her over to each one in your family, the mother figure, the father, siblings. And I want you to one by one go through each one of them and say goodbye. You can say anything that you'd like to them. But let the child self say goodbye. And with that goodbye, I want you to hold on really tight to this child. 
And I want you to keep repeating to her, you're safe and you're loved and you're taken care of. And I've always got you. And keep walking forward. And your child self is going to keep looking back. She's going to keep peeking around your shoulder. She's going to keep looking back. And you're going to look back, too, and you're going to see everybody waving. And they're saying goodbye, and they're wishing you well. You're going to keep walking. You're going to keep walking until they're tiny little pinpoints in the distance, and you don't see them anymore. And now you're going to take your child self, and you're going to put her down in front of you, and you're going to look at her, and you're going to say, you did it. I'm so proud of you. You did it. And you're going to tell your child self, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you grab all your belongings. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to put you in my heart. Because in my heart, you will never, ever be alone. You will always be here. And I want you to know that you always have a voice. I will always listen to you. And I will always put your best interest at heart. I will always make sure that you are taken care of. I will always ask you what you think. I will always be here to protect you, to love you, to have fun with you. I will always make sure you have everything that you need. And know that with every breath I take, that you will take that breath with me. I love you so much. You're going to pick her up and you're going to put her right in your heart. And you're going to give her the biggest squeeze in the heart. And right there, each one of you have now stepped into a new energy where you are no longer walking with the ideas or the beliefs, anything that doesn't align with you that came from your past or your childhood, the pain and the wounds. Child in you knows how loved, safe, and protected, how beautiful you are, how innocent you are, because she is always 100% part of you. So what I want you to do now is just take another deep breath, And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. And that's it. Wow. That was so powerful. The visuals were just amazing. Yeah. It's really, um, it really surprised me when I did it. You know, it surprised me what what came forward. And Eric said, uh, (laughs) everyone listening right now, this is the time to do this because there's a lot of healing happening for us and we're all ready to move into this new version of ourselves. And many Mm -hmm. of us have been hearing it, feeling it. And he says there's a vibrational shift taking place right now. And so some of us might be feeling it like chaos, you know, where we might be feeling a little chaotic and needing to really ground ourselves. And we could also have a lot of really good things going on. And sometimes that can, you know, we need to ground ourselves through that as well because whether it's a challenging energy or there's a lot yeah. of good stuff going on, it can, it can be just as, as uh, difficult. Yeah. And settling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, um, this kind of gives us a chance to, to step back and, to really step into this new energy. And he says this will help ground us as well. So this full Um, moon is sort of ushering in a rebirth, I guess, in a way, right? It is. Well, it's a a spring cleaning. Um, Eric says this is the moon that we can, well, it's related to spring. So he says in spring, you know, um, we talk about birth, rebirth. This moon, Easter always falls after this. And so we That's think right. about Easter as like the ushering in of all things that are new. Um, he's showing me like lambs and rabbits and nature and um, the birds and new baby birds and nests. So he says, but think of the spring cleaning. You know, this is the mm-hmm. time of year where we're 
ready to open up our windows and let fresh air in if we've been cooped up through the, the cooler weather. Mm. Um, you know, hanging our linen out on the line again. Mm-hmm. All of those types of things. So he says it's getting rid of the dust bunnies and the cobwebs. So this is a, a new moon that's ushering in a new energy. And he also says that vibrationally, um, mm-hmm. that we have solar codes. So a lot of us are experiencing n- new, um, well, he calls them like cellular downloads that oh. come from a lot of the solar flares come from the sun, from the planetary shift. And so there's an intensity to that. It's actually been going on, he says, for about five or six months. We've had an intensity wow. to this. But right yeah, now, I know there's there's a, there, there was a big solar flare recently, right? Yeah. At least one. Not that yeah. I watch the news very often, but I did catch one. Right, right. And, and that all has effect on us. Oh, so yeah. all of the, like, because he says we're made up of, the planets, the stars, the water, everything. So we, you know, we are affected by all of those shifts and changes. And he says that when we are able to flow with it, we can use it to our advantage. But with there being cellular change, he says that's why some illnesses are coming up. They're not coming up to say you have something for the rest of your life, but sometimes we're having an illness come up to help us make a shift, oh, to make wow. a change. So it can yeah. be a dense energy that's rising to the top for one reason or another. And he said that this is also the energy where miracles take place. Mm. Well, yeah, so. there's some miracles that have happened here recently. But I will, before I describe those, I will say that, mm-hmm. you know, we're 66% water. You know, the, the, yeah. the moon, especially the full moon, affects the tides. So of course it's going to affect <laughs> us, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. He says ask any police officer or anyone that works in the hospital what it's like on a full moon. Oh, God. <laughs> the, when I was on the uh, labor and delivery service, full moon, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, of course. It's, the it's like amazing. Moon, it affected everything. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It mm. truly is. It yeah. is. All right. Um, I want to tell you about these two miracles that I have <laughs> described them. I don't think I did. I say this on the last radio show about the. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I don't know where I heard it, but I have it on good authority. No, I, it was in the news or something, right? Mm-hmm. Or somebody mm-hmm. told me it was on the news. Uh, that in this Catholic church, and I do not remember where they were. They had these the communion wafers. I don't know what you call them. Um, yeah. In, in a little thing, and they were handing them out. And they started running out. And whoever was sending out, mm-hmm. oh my God, we're running out. Go to the store and get some more. No, he didn't say that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but all of a sudden, they started replicating and replicating. And boom, all of a sudden, there were just hundreds of them in the little whatever. Wow. Yeah. And then another one is, you know, uh, they uh, the, one of those communion, this is somewhere else, okay? Communion wafers dropped on the ground. And apparently, it's protocol to pick it up and put it in a chalice full of water and so the whatever person did that and all of a sudden it looked at the water it started turning red and it read more and more red and it looked like blood so they sent it for analysis and the scientist said this is blood from heart tissue no way yeah, and wow. I it to somebody. I think Denise said, "Yeah, that's miracles do happen, right?" Yes, it's yes. not out of the realm of possibilities, and those were actually true miracles. Yes, yeah, and that's exactly what he's saying because um, he said uh, he knew you were going to say something about this, or we were going to mention it, and he says we have everyday miracles, and those things do happen. And he says they don't always get reported. But I those bet not. things do happen. Yeah. And he says they like, happen more, yeah, more like often than what we Jesus. see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That's a blood from the heart. Um, Eric says that that was a, a lesson in um, life and death. He says wow. um, birth and renewal. And that's mm. what the message was for that group on that day was about renewal. 
And he mm. says that everyone that, including those that were testing, were, uh, it, that affected them a great deal. No. They will never forget that. Mm-hmm. I thought the lesson was just don't be so clumsy and drop these wafers, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or make sure you get enough of these little wafers, okay? Come on. Yeah. Be prepared. And make sure you have make sure you have enough. I can't remember what they're called either, but I I know exactly what you mean. The communion wafers, yeah. Yeah, right. There's a name. I you know, and it said in the news, but I can't remember. Yeah. Uh oh. Um, all right. Do you want That's to start taking callers? Or do you yes, have absolutely. anything else to say, Eric? Okay. Eric, well, Eric let me just see says, here. He just said, well, I love you, Mom. I love you more, baby. Okay. Got somebody from the 651 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Uh-oh. There we go. Hi there. How you doing? Hi. This is Christiana from Minnesota. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just going to ask, um, just wondering how you see my mom going to St. Peter, Minnesota on the 15th. Is everything going to come together? Wait, to live and or? Well, to live. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Eric is saying, um, he, he says, yeah, it should go fine. Um, one thing he is mentioning to you is, just to make sure that you, you're planning, um, plan what you can, what you're able to. And he yeah. says there could be some little, um, and not big deals, but he says some things that might not go exactly as planned. So he says, you, you know, make room for flexibility, but whatever you can do in advance to make it easier on yourself, he says, do it. But it'll go fine. Okay. What, what are these these little um, hiccups like the cable man didn't arrive on time, or things something like serious, that. like things that are it's like Little timing. Things. Like okay. he's, he's saying, like I thought this would happen by this time, and it's now we're late, oh, yeah. or this person was supposed to show up, or this. Oh, this there's a minor. Yeah. Something came up, so he said, just don't let those kind of things bother you. Um, but he's saying like whatever it, and I don't know what you're doing about actually moving things because he's talking about making sure that you double check what you're booking. Are you booking a truck? No, we're going to um, borrow a van from a friend. Okay. Mm. okay. So maybe cause he's, he's talking about your, like what you're moving with. So just double check that everything is okay before you go. Okay. So maybe like, just make like sure that, make sure that the date just make sure that everything that there's no room for assumptions in anything. Yeah, make sure they yeah. really are going to let you borrow the van. You know? Make sure everything's wrapped yeah. well. Make sure the van yeah. runs. Yeah. Just just All something right, like that, and and I'll just tell you, I, I think there's a mercury retrograde coming, and it's not that really that is a huge thing, but sometimes that can play into things kind of have, being a little bumpy when we're doing moves and stuff like that. But sometimes okay, I just want to retrograde is good, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I get the keys in my hand by the fifteenth, you know, in that department. Mine. So. Yeah, you should have that. No problem. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Congratulations. All right, well, thank Christina. you. Enjoy your move. Yeah, congratulations. All right. Next, got somebody from the 501 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. This is the peach cobbler lady. There's a peach oh. cobbler lady. I knew it. Hi. <laughs> but anyway, hello, ladies, and I love all of you. Thank oh, you. Oh, we love you too. I have a question. All right. I've got a financial miracle that's coming to me starting tomorrow. Ooh. Is everything to work out all right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So... Um, 
what Eric is saying is that trust that things will be all right. So there might be something that just holds up a little bit. So it might not go exactly the way it's supposed to tomorrow. But he says that doesn't mean that it's not happening. So he says, like, yeah. know that it's okay. It's okay because he's just saying that sometimes sometimes things get shifted a little bit. and It doesn't mean it's not going to happen because he just says everything's okay. It's okay. So just just take it with them. Um, he says, I don't know, whatever an appointment is or um, you might be kind of expecting it to come at a certain time and that the timing is off, but it's still coming. Well, I, I'm not ex- expecting it at a certain time. It's going to uh, okay. start being put in my account tomorrow. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, good. That's great girl. news. Good very for you. Good. Well, thank y'all. Bye, Donna. Yes, it's very good. That is awesome. I'm That's still waiting great. for my peach cobbler. And also, I want yes. to say that I see that some people, like, they ask their question and then they go. They don't listen to the rest of the show. And I don't know if I am very happy about that, just saying. But, mm-hmm. you know, you never know. They have pressing things, uh, perhaps. Anyway, we've got somebody from the 910 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, it's Belinda from North Carolina. Hey, Belinda. How you doing? Hello, ladies. Hi. What can I we do for you? I was wondering if Eric sees anything happy coming in the next little while. I'm a little bit tired of being sad. Mm. Mm. Some good news, Eric. Some good news. Eric says there's going to be a little more balance coming. Uh, he's actually talking about you feeling better. Um, like you physically feeling bad. Have you not been well, Belinda? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, last week I had two shots in each hip. Oh. So the bursitis, it just popped up. <laughs> Truck enteric bursitis, yeah. I gave, I, I give those shots all the time. Yikes. I was very said, surprised he didn't hurt. <laughs> he didn't hurt me. Good. Awesome. Oh. Well, what, what Eric is saying is he says that, you know, you're going to have a little easier time getting around. You know, you're going to feel a little better. And and he says that's going to make everything feel a lot better because he says how you've been feeling has really kind of put a little bit of a damper on a lot of other things for you, too. Yeah, Belinda, you know, oh, yeah. you you can go, Google certain exercises, like physical therapy exercises for trochanteric bursitis, uh, or get them from your your doctor, and that can really help too. Yeah, he said yeah, that. Yeah, well with that, the, with the, my back, I've had three spinal surgeries and a few, yeah. and so uh-huh. but I'd love to get back in my garden. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also yeah. great physical therapy for the lumbosacral spine, for especially mm-hmm. sacroiliitis. So, you know, just ask your doctor said, about online or, yeah. or hand out physical therapy things. You don't have to go to a physical therapist necessarily, but right. it doesn't work. Yeah, I had to get a new uh, doctor. <laughs> My doctor was sent to prison. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. That's not good. <laughs> no, yeah. he's a great doctor. He just got financially Aww. over his head. Oh. Yeah. That's too wow. bad. Oh, yeah. That's a shame. All right, Belinda, you get better, okay? Get back yeah, to your take care. Okay, next one. Got somebody from the 732 area code. Hi there. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much. How is everybody else? Yay! Good. Doing great. I am Melissa from Manchester, New Jersey. And oh, yeah. based mm-hmm. on the topic of tonight, yes, like I know Melissa you guys Manchester. are so Oh, my God, Melissa Manchester, the singer, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm yes, sure that's not the, last, the first time you've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> Based on the wonderful topic of the evening, I uh, just wondered what Eric has to offer me tonight because 
other than, I mean, really, I'm so happy. I don't. I wouldn't even know what to ask anymore. Well, that's awesome. That is really so, good. Did you did you do a lot of forgiveness work, like healing with forgiveness at one point? You know, I've been doing that my whole life, and I think I'm yeah. to the point now that I'm all about the love. Yeah. And I, I probably am one of the most non-judgmental, forgiving mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Oh, and the word the word oh. you were looking for is host. <laughs> In the Catholic Church, it's the host. What is it? The host, H O S T. Oh. Oh, that's the wafer. Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good. Awesome Good. to know. Yeah. What What Erica is saying is, um, he's just showing me kind of what your journey has been and he says that um you know you've worked through a lot of things and he says that you've got a lot to share to other people as well so are you wanting to or do you already work with other people like with healing or anything like that i just i mean i i try to be a good friend and a good listener and Mm -hmm. um I don't think, I mean, I'm not doing anything where I'm laying my hands on people or anything as well, the scalar work or anything like that. So you don't have anything, to. And yeah, you don't have to. You don't have mm-hmm. to. And and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going out and, like, opening a business and doing it like that. Like, being a healer is who you are, who you are in the world. And um, But what he is saying is that there are synchronicities and and you might already be having some of them, but he says the synchronicities are going to come up in the next six months or so that are going to be kind of pushing you in more of a direction uh, of, and I'm going to say service in a way that's different than what you are giving right now. Because he says you are a good friend and you are a good listener. But he says you've got a lot of value in who you naturally are. Mm. And, oh, and so he just said, Pardon me. I think that's a nice yeah. thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Uh, being a great healer is just being present. It and really existing is. In the world, you know? It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that is who you are. And yeah. to have to have that communication with somebody that is non judgmental like you are. And Eric says, you know, if you look back, as he says, um, really look back at what you have learned because he says um, you, you you don't see as much as you really, like he says, you've got a lot of wisdom in your experiences. And he says, really look at that because he says, sometimes the, the love that feels so good, we forget that maybe some other people aren't thinking that in the same way. And he says, you have a lot to offer mm. to other people. So he said, investigate that and ask a couple of questions and you're going to see synchronicities come up. And Eric is raising his hand saying, and he is part of that to help you to kind of oh. show you where you can express that in the world. If you choose to, he says your choice, but he says there's lots coming if you'd like to take it. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. I would love that. I do want to live yeah. my life of service and the synch- yeah. synch- synchronicities is, are, are amazing. I see angel numbers all the yes. time and now it's like a joke yeah. in my family you know because yes. I'm always pointing them out it's so amazing yes. I and I always say and I like point to it and I'm like angel number C they're all on my my spirit yeah. team is with me and I know yeah. Eric's there because he told me that he was uh, you know one of my uh, on my spiritual team so I'm yes <laughs> I feel so great yes. and I walk Love around him. with that all the time yes that's great and he, wants, he wants to help you expand because he says like, let's experience more. Let's take that love and let's experience more. Let's share that. So so mm-hmm. play around with those ideas and he'll help lead you. He's real good at that. He's an awesome teacher. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have You're a welcome. great night. You Thank too. You. Wow. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Made her night, year, yeah. life. All right, got somebody, another person from the 213 area code. Hi there, how you doing? 
Hi, it's yeah. Lisa again. Sorry, that's my chair. Hi, it's Lisa. Lisa from California. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Lisa. Hi. I was calling to see um, California has been having a lot of rain, and I wondered if that's weather manipulation or if Erica tell mm. us if it's natural. You know, it's crazy. Oh. My sister's in T- Topanga. She can't believe it, all these atmospheric pressures, and they're causing havoc throughout the country as they go and create tornadoes and stuff in the southeast. It's just awful. What is it, mm. Eric? Well, um, now Eric says that there there is some weather manipulation that goes on. He says, yeah, that, that, that does happen, but what he's saying is being experienced right now is he says it's climate change. It's climate mm. shifting. Yeah. Um, he says that's really what's responsible for that. Um, oh. Okay. So now it, he does say that it's going to get a little weird. There is going to be some more weird weather that's oh. coming. He says there'll be like little pockets of things kind of slow down and feel like they're back to normal and then they'll change again. So he says, okay. just just know that there's some there's some natural changes taking place, and he says that the it, the Earth has done this before. The Earth has done okay. this before, so it's really not new to the Earth, but it's new to us. Yeah. Thank you so much. It yeah, could be related to axis tilting, the orbit changing, the change. Yes, or yes. Anything. yes. Yeah, he did yeah. show. He did say that. All right, thank you, yeah. ladies. Have a good well, All right, good thank you. Lisa. You bet. Okay, got somebody from the 515 area code. How are you doing? Hey, Mama Lisa. Hi, Miss Jen. Hey. Hi, hey, girl, what's up? Hi. Hey, I got to tell you this. So, like, right before um, the peach peach cobbler lady came on. Donna, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you for a shout out because I hadn't heard her voice in so long and I just love her personality. <laughs> and then I boom, know, I love out. it. She's awesome. Yeah, I know. Southern accent and yeah, stuff. I know. Yeah, it's great. I was like, it's I'm great. psychic too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was happy to hear yeah. her. She sounded good. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is today my mama went in the garage and she smelled my stepdad's cologne. Ooh. Oh. And I just thought that's so endearing. And so I'm just like, hey, maybe he does have a message for her today. Mm. His name is his name. What is his first name? Don. Don? Don? Don. Correct. And where did, where, did he, where did he live? Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Okay. Don from Iowa. He's he's coming in and um so he he just stepped in here and he's touching her cheek. Um, tell her if she feels some little tickles on the side of her cheek and the top of her head, this is him. Um, what he's yeah. saying is he wants her to be able to recognize, like to 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 know that it is him and that he's there around her. And um he's also wanting her to give all of that love that she feels to herself. Oh. To give it to herself. Mm-hmm. That's sweet. Okay. Like taking care of herself. What's he doing over I, there? Well, it, he also just said that uh, how much he loves her. Um, and I don't know if she's going through his, like, his stuff or if she's been going through any tools or something. Like, there's, like, a box, and it looks like there's, like, a – my dad used to call this like the didgeridoo box. It's got everything in it. So it looks uh-huh. like some pieces that may have been his. Um, what's he doing over there? Let's see. Um, he's saying the name Pop. So I don't know if this is his dad or a grandfather. Uh-huh. But he's got like a, a Pop there. Um, there's also a dog with him as well. Yes, of course. So he wants he, he wants that to be known that he he's got the do- dogs dogs. She always so finds he, sticky notes around the house with notes from him. So say wow. that again. She finds sticky notes all the time around the house, or or a card that he gave her, you know, stuck somewhere. Oh, wow. I mean, from the tiny cool. past, she's 
teaching him today. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, he, he's very much like, do you see me? So smelling him was just another way of her receiving him because he's, he's all over the place. Like he's, he, um, he is, and he's very interactive. So um, if your mom were to, the, the more she communicates, and when you said no, he says right back. Oh, oh. So, yeah, she okay. she can write back to him, and she there's a lot of interesting things that he can do, um, with communication. Really? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fine. Yeah, and he's very eager to do it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. <laughs> okay. What is she eager to cool. connect? Um, like really meditate. To use her intention. So just to, okay. to do it when she feels quiet, like he's around her in many different. You know, sometimes she's busy doing things and sometimes she's just sitting down relaxing. But it's her intent. So if she were to to think to call him in and just start talking to him, and he just says, do it the same way you've always done it. Oh, like I'm still here. Yeah. Just yeah. start talking oh. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's sweet. Well, I'm sending all my love to him. Oh, that's so sweet. I will definitely he have her listen. Got it. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, that's so Hi, sweet. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, got what some a nice energy. energy he had too. Oh, sounds like it. Sounds like he's a busy yeah. guy. Uh, yeah. We got somebody from the four four three area code. Hi there. Hi, it's Denise from Pennsylvania. Thank you for yeah, your meditation, Eric. Hi. Um, yeah, my my forty. Yeah, it was awesome. I, it made me cry. It was beautiful. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. good. yeah. My 43-year-old nephew passed March 10th. He left behind four small children, and he oh. got in sleep. And, he, and, you know, his wife was the breadwinner, but he did have a, a big set of skills, uh, like computer skills. Um, he had an autopsy, and it was it said natural causes. And I wondered if, if that's correct and why he chose to leave now? Was it an exit point? If if there's any messages for his children or his sister or mother? Sure. What's his sure. name? His name was Dylan B. from upstate New York. Okay. Okay. Dylan okay. B. Hang on. Okay. Dylan here. Has quite a personality. Oh, Eric, Eric's bringing him in. So Eric just, he, what Eric does is he'll show me Sometimes he's got them standing right there with him, and sometimes Eric will. It's like he opens a door and hollers for them, and he, he just brought him in. Next. Um, yeah, Billy. here here he is. Um, so first thing I've got to tell you is um, he he says that his exit point was more about him continuing on his soul plan in spirit. Um, he says that in the physical, um, like he had no idea. He wasn't sick. There was nothing going on with him. Like he's right. not showing anything with the body. Now, do you happen to know if he had an enlarged heart? He did. Yes. Because he's and showing false, false that, arteries. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he, he's showing like things brewing that he didn't mm-hmm. know about. Mm-hmm. Like he, he was really not sick or anything, but he says that um, mm-hmm. part of it, and as hard as this is, is the soul lessons that he leaves behind, which mm-hmm. is the, mm-hmm. the, what's being, being dealt yeah. with. And That's what I thought. He says, yeah, and he says they're hard lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, really But hard. he also understands that... Um, overcoming them because he says I'm I'm helping he's helping all of them persevere mm. through this mm. he also like um he recognizes the sadness and the loneliness mm. um because yeah. he says I love you so much and mm-hmm. I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye mm-hmm. um mm. he, it's very important to him that he's very honest because he says that he wants to take this opportunity to be very honest and make sure that that his family, that they all know how much he loves them mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. his leaving 
is like nobody did anything wrong. Yeah. There's nothing that anybody did wrong. Um, mm-hmm. He says that he went through a, a state of acceptance, and he actually says that he, he is crossing, and that has been very quick. Good. And he talks about it being very painless. Good. So, That's fabulous. So, and who, who yeah. met him? Can you, can you tell us who met him on um, the way? Did, was, his fa- was his father or, or was there a grandfather no. that was like a no. father? There's a grandfather. An older male yep. grandfather, okay. Okay, um, and I... know the, the grandfather had a heart condition? Yes. Yep. Yeah. He had a tumor yeah. around his heart. Yep. Oh, yeah. wow. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, any specific yeah. messages for, for Fran, his sister, or Kathy, his mother? Just love, lots of love. He wants to, to let them know that, um, like, he sees both sides of things right now. It's like he's balancing um, seeing what they're going through and then also seeing this bigger perspective. And he mm-hmm. says that, um, like, he's got a lot of, like, empathy, you know, like a lot mm-hmm. of, like, I really see what you're going through. But oh. he's also thanking his sister and so is there something that she is doing or stepping up and doing for him right now? Um, uh, meal fundraising for, for his wife and family. Okay. Oh, on, on Venmo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's, nice. he's really grateful. He's really Aww. grateful because he's, he's saying that, um, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. it's like making making gold out of hard times and he's like saying you you have no idea how important all of this is and how it will be oh, looked yeah. back as, as so yeah, valuable awesome. he just says thank you very much he also says that he loves you um yeah. he's very proud of his family and he yeah. will be by their side to help them mm-hmm. through this and yeah. they and they'll get signs from him They'll get That's signs from so him, good. particularly on the computer, like uh-huh. with laptops and things like uh-huh. like sounds and things moving oh, that shouldn't normally move. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. And, and Eric, saying, please, please show him everything that you know. Thank you. Oh, God, okay. I don't know Eric, about everything. I don't Eric, know. Don't, don't worry about that. So okay. the Eric Welcoming Committee is on the job. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, poor Dylan yeah. will never be the same. All right, we got somebody from <laughs> eight. That was a cool reading. Eight yeah. zero one zero code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hi. 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 How are you guys doing? We're doing good. good. How, are, How you? are you? Excellent. This is my first time calling, and I actually just wanted to share an experience oh. that I had. And oh, it cool. to me is a miracle. You were talking about miracles earlier. Mm-hmm. And I um have for myself I've created a meditation world. Um I walk through a door and half of my world is dark and I see the universe and you know, the different mm-hmm. things that happen. And the mm-hmm. other half is light where I've got wow. all my favorite trees and a gazebo and so when I meditate cool. I can, you know, go to either one. Mm. Well, I had this one day where I had the worst headache. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And so I just went to bed. And mm. I was squishing my head, trying to find something to make it feel a little bit better. I thought, I'll mm-hmm. put my head on my cool pillow. And mm-hmm. something said to me, feel the pain. Mm. And so that's what I did. And so I gave it colors and I gave it a shape and I gave it all of this. All of this. And then suddenly I was... I uh, somehow in a vision or something, I was transported to my world and I was standing in between the light and the dark and there was a figure there and the figure took my hand and pulled me a step forward and turned me around and I was facing myself. Oh my Um, God. And this figure took the pain out of my head. He took this energy out of my head. It was about the size of a basketball. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And he put it in my arms like a baby and showed me how, oh how to my soothe gosh. it. Oh, my gosh. And that figure was Eric. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you come oh, I had been you? asking for him to help me oh, in my meditation. I have chills. 
over Me my too. whole body. Is Absolutely that the coolest cool. thing ever? That yeah. is so awesome. Is Eric yes. one, of her, so, one of your guides, maybe? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, he is. He yeah. is. And he. I asked him to help me um, with a dream guide, and he brought in a guide named Charmaine. And so um, I... I kind of do all all of this stuff on my own, you know, with learning yeah. to listening to you guys and taking your advice. You're so amazing. that's actually how I got a hold of Eric is taking your advice. Wow. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm learning a lot, and I just want to tell you how awesome he is. Oh. And every time, every time I'm having a bad day, he comes. Oh. Yeah. He's incredible. I love him so much. And, You're and such I, a good I want boy. To, can I just share with you what he said? Um yes. so he, he's that is absolutely incredible. He says that this lifetime for you is about self mastery. And mm-hmm. he says that your purpose um your abilities are all in your visualization and and your your creation. The imagination, he says that you can do anything with that. And part of him showing you that was showing you that power that you can do anything by changing the perspective and by looking at something yeah. differently. And so he says, now, look what else you can apply that to. He says you can do okay. that to anything. And he says, remember, awesome. this is self-mastery, he says. He says, oh, girl, things are going to get good. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So I'm nice. working on everything I can think of. I was yeah. holding my pendulum, hoping that I would get uh, to talk to you ladies, and it was going crazy. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, oh, he, yeah. Eric, Eric was telling me, don't Eric hang up, because I was kind of losing my nerve. <laughs> no. Eric can swing that pendulum, man. He'll do it with yeah. all yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Thanks for calling and sharing this awesome story. Well, yes. That is amazing. Yes, you ladies take care. You, you too. too. Okay. Love you guys. Bye bye. Love you too. Oh my gosh. That Oh wow. That wow. That wow, really wow. Made my, I know. That was so sweet. Yeah. All right. That's amazing. Oh gosh. Uh all right, we have somebody from the eight zero two area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hey, how's everybody go- doing? Good. Hi. How it's, you doing? Uh, Chris from, uh, yeah, good. It's Chris from Vermont. Hey, Chris from Vermont. Oh, Chris. So I'm calling because, uh, so about three weeks ago, I woke up about three in the morning and I got this um, thing that came into my head that just said Eric's house. Um you know, I talked to you guys about a month ago, and uh, I just recently uh, got approved for my settlement. And mm-hmm. Awesome. I, um, and I've been doing things that I don't normally do. I just, uh, I, I just uh, got into a suicide hotline to mm. uh, help people that are going through it and um, like I said about three weeks ago um, I don't know if it was Eric that was sitting on my bed but um, I felt something on uh, the front part of my bed and Mm. um, was it Eric? I was thinking yeah Yeah. Yeah. Eric said yes and he just turned to me and said I told you that I'm with everybody tonight (laughs) Oh. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, uh, Alisa, I really would like to, um, I would really like to donate some of my money for my settlement. No, 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 to, no, no, no. Oh. No. no, I, 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 I can't accept any money uh, because my son died and I can't do anything to exploit and I don't I don't want money and money is not important but you are so sweet to offer donate it to a wonderful charity if you wish um, well you guys pick you guys pick the charity and I'll do it no you're sweet all right maybe you guys can in the comments if you have a charity but yeah I mean 
you know, just give it to somebody in need. You're bound to run across somebody in your mm-hmm. life, across this passage with you that's struggling, right? Mm-hmm. right. So, yeah. but, you know, you will be led to where the money needs to go, I think, and Eric will probably help yeah. you. And that's what he just said, that he'll he'll help lead you to to somewhere. And I got to tell you, Eric said that your spiritual path, your personal growth, like, this is the happy wow. ending in life that you have always wanted, and he says, and it's happening for you. So oh, Eric says yeah. he's really proud of you. He's very proud of you. Yeah, Chris, you don't know how amazing. much that means to me. You're awesome. an amazing person. Wow. Yeah. It's true. It's true. I try to be. I try to be. Well, a lot of people don't. So awesome. Yeah. Love you, Chris. Thank you so much for calling. I love you guys, too. Love you. Wow. Take care of our boy, Chris, Eric. Keep taking care of him. Because he he is is worthy. What incredible people that we're hearing (laughs) from like tonight. Really? This is just amazing. I know. They're always incredible, but like yeah. just great stories and just wow. Oh. <sighs> All right, we got some somebody from the two one seven area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hi. It's Ann from Illinois. Hey Ann from <laughs> Illinois, what's up? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you, Elisa, for um, your help. I've been emailing you. Yes, I know. Oh, and, and, I, and middle initial M, last name yes. A, right? Yep. Yes. Yep, that's me. <laughs> I've been, I've been <laughs> working on you. I've been working very hard on you, girl. And and I can tell. I have had mm. the sweats for two days. <laughs> Dude, that's a good oh, time. wow. <laughs> wow. Just, I'm just, I mean, just pouring out of me. <laughs> wow. Awesome. And I woke up energized this morning. I have oh. walked in uh, my front room to my bathroom without needing my inhaler because I can walk oh, three feet and my O2 drops to 70, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm already seeing changes. Oh, I just God. Thank I'm you. Near near and, oh, I just can't. Huh? Excuse me? We're not even near mm-hmm. done. So that's oh, good. Oh, I can't wait. I've been telling everybody I'm going to be healed, and everyone thinks oh. I'm crazy. And I've been saying yeah. it for a year. I said, I'm telling you. I'm it, I don't know when, how, but I'm going to be healed. Because I have 18% function in my lungs the last time I checked. Went yeah. to the doctor. Uh, wow. And, um, yeah. Again, but, Eric says this is another happy ending. He says you are healed. That no, is what's happening. No. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's great. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. Well, that's very unusual. <laughs> Thanks you for calling. And I'm still going to work on you tonight. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, is there any way that I could um, know the name of my spirit guide and my guardian angel? Um, you have a, a guide with you that is, um, let me see how I say this, Ur- Ursula? Ur- okay. Ursula? Um, and she's coming forward as a guide just to let you know she. Looks like um like a like a little German like lady like she's got like wow. this little hat on with these wooden shoes like that kind of wow. with a little apron. Okay, guys, wow. we're almost at a time. Uh, Garden okay. needs your name real quick, real quick. All right, thank what? you. I love you guys. Love oh. you too. Okay, we can call back about the guardian angel name. All right, yes, thank you for calling in, everybody. And this is an amazing show. And thank you to our uh, awesome you. co-host, Michelle Gray, at thehealingh-art.com. Love you all. Mm-hmm. Love you, Eric. Love, love you, me. Michelle. Love you, too. Eric says love you. And love you, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs>